Okay. There we go again. All right, we'll try it again. <clears throat> I changed location to get better signal. I think this should be better. Hopefully you can get in. Yes. It's not stuttering. Great. Okay, I'm in. <laughs> the joys of technology, such a fun thing. Welcome. Evie, nice to have you here. Perfect. You're someone I know can promote Wideland Lorry here back. Good. Okay, thank you for joining me. I had to change locations in the building I'm in because um, Wi-Fi reception is better here than it was before. If you're in a meeting, okay, keep it quiet. I won't tell anybody. Watch the replay. But if you that's okay. Evie, you've got a life. I understand. Um, I've actually got a commitment to be um, somewhere else in 45 minutes. I'm, I, am, I serve. Thank you. I appreciate that, Evie. Yeah, I serve in the prayer ministry at my spiritual center uh, first Wednesday, so 3 o'clock I'm booked there, and so I've got 45 minutes to get the scope out, delivered, inspired. Thank you for sharing. And everybody else who's coming in, please share this far and wide on Periscope. This is my daily scope. This is today, Wednesday, is Woman Up Wednesday, and it's going to be the flip side of Monday, which was Man Up Monday, um, excuse me, on the same old topic, which basically is about why, um, why men disappear which is going to be certainly important to some of you women out there and probably some of the guys too as so you get some value from this. So I'm speaking from a different angle and Eve, you've heard some of this before. So if you're not going to be here, I understand. But thanks for coming in. Thanks for the hearts. And thanks for sharing this out on Periscope and Twitter. My Twitter broadcast link is still busted for the last two months and they're trying to fix it. So, sorry, itchy nose. All right. So, hi. Welcome to my scope. My name is Barry Selby. I am a uh, relationship expert, coach, speaker, consultant about love and life and things like that. I'm number one best-selling author. This is my book. I always have to promote my book. Pitch it. There you go. It's my book. Pitch on the back. That's me. Um, you can find it on Amazon on my website. You can find out more about my website. And if you want to get a discovery session, I have a website link, which is that. barrysilver.com slash consult. Okay. Promotion's over. Getting, on to <laughs> getting into the topic. Thanks for being here, by the way, and I appreciate it. If you're here for the first time, if you'd be so kind, just put a one in the comments so I know you are here for the first time. And also, if you are the first time, please make sure you do follow me by tapping the guy in the corner and sharing this out on Twitter and on Periscope as well. So, the question of the day, Woman at Wednesday, is um, you feel like he disappeared. He did. Here's why. <clears throat> so, ladies and gents, um, for those watching, in the expression of relationship, the burgeoning of connection and intimacy in relationship, you may have noticed that men and women are different. Like, that's not <laughs> rocket science. There's more to it than that. And in this context of this conversation, what I want to speak to is the way that men and women are um, relating to each other is different. And for women, being the natural nurturer and the actually it's really what it is the gatherer protector, their, your experience, women, your female experience, is to explore and expand the journey of relationship and intimacy and then let it build and unfold and see where it goes. It's kind of the way you, you enjoy every moment. You're, for the feminine, it's kind of to explore every morsel and to and savor and enjoy every part of the journey. Men are different. We innately, going back into the ancestry and our, our um, archetypes, we are basically the, um, the hunters. So we are on target acquisition, to put it really bluntly. And so what we're doing in relationship, particularly when we're dating, and dating is a masculine practice because it's a hunting technique. That's why the online dating scene and the swipe phone apps are designed for men, not for women. Sorry, ladies. And if women, you do those, use those resources, by the way, you're functioning from the masculine mindset. Just to be aware of this when you go out and start dating, which energy you're bringing forward in relationships. So ladies, if you're not in relationships, and if you're leading or you're choosing or you're going out on the dating sites and picking somebody, you're doing it from the masculine point of view. And if you're being a masculine energy together with a man and you both have the same energy, you're going to fight against it. So the option is going to be that if you step out and you actually have someone who then um, acquiesces into the feminine, ideally it's the female who does that. If it's a male who does that, it could get really messy. Because I, I from experience, did this in past relationships. I actually screwed up more times than not where I'd be dating somebody and she was in a power getting things done dynamic and I was very attracted to that. But I was letting her make decisions, which is the masculine mindset. So I was softening to the feminine to hold the space for her and say, whatever you want, honey, which was nice for about two months each time. But after that, it wore out because she wanted me to take charge and lead, which is what most women truly want in relationship. Not dominate, but lead. It's a different energy. So getting back to the topic in today's Periscope broadcast, I know you're all waiting, excited for the answer. Um, and thanks for watching, by the way. 
although there's no comments and no screen, no, not many hearts. So I'm like, are you watching? You're involved? You're learning? I hope so. So why, they, why we disappear, why men appear to disappear, is this. As I mentioned, we are the hunters. We are, we are in target acquisition mode. So when we're out in the world um, in dating, we really basically have a goal in mind, a target or an intention that we want to see if we can fulfill with you. And that's the question, is, are you the one? Are you not the one? Maybe you are, maybe you're not. That's a good question. So it's one of those uncertainties. So we don't know and we don't have the chance to explore because in the masculine, it's like goal acquisition and target achievement. It sounds so mechanical, but it's the way we function. <clears throat> so when we're dating you, we will be fully participating, excited, let's check it out because we want to get to a certain milestone or a goal to say, this is the one or this is not the one. And the challenge is, either way, if you are the one or you're not the one, once we hit that goal, we relax because we've done our job. We've accomplished the goal. We've finished our assignment. If you are the one, we grow comfortable. We get relaxed. And frankly, our energy dissipates a bit. So it seems like you pull away. If you're not the one, we're going to walk away anyway. But we don't have innately, I'm sorry, but men don't innately have the right skills to say to you, um, this is not working out. And it's, it's, I'm realizing it's not like it for me. I need to make a different choice or anything like that. It's not something men do naturally. Ladies, you probably can attest to this. It's, it's a really um, unromantic technique. I'm sorry, we, it's like we, we aren't raised with this naturally as men. Very few men have the skill set to be um, inspired to have romantic languaging when it comes to break up or not working out because we don't have comfortable ways of saying, I'm rejecting you because of what it feels like. Not good, you know? So in addition to that, there's a um, refinement. And that is speaking to the point of view where if the man has reached his goal of finding out you're the one he wants to be with and he relaxes, from a female point of view you can do this and from the male point of view you want to speak to this too. As I said, we're goal-oriented as men. So our step-by-step um, -step process, our intention, by the way, is to achieve a goal complete. So then you go up, achieve the goals and be good. Achieve another goal, achieve another goal. So in relationship, as crazy as it sounds, we need to have that in place as well. So as men, we achieve a certain point with you, which is what you may notice when you've been dating somebody, they have a certain way of doing goal setting with you, not overtly, but maybe they want to get to go to the second date or to take you out for dinner or to sleep with you or to uh, move in together. Those are progressive goals. As unromantic as that sounds, that's the truth. So for men, one of our um, abilities is to establish, aim for, and achieve goals. And in relationships, as strange as that sound is, is a good thing to implement into your romantic experience. And the goal might be to take you out on an adventure to the wilderness, or it might be to introduce you to his parents. Those are goals, even as much as they sound romantic. So understanding that is key. I know a lot of people dropped off, maybe that scared them. <laughs> it's okay. Those of you who are here, I appreciate you here because you're getting value, I trust. And by the way, if you have any questions or comments, please type them in the comments. I, I'm definitely entertained dialogue because it's not meant to be just a lecture. It's my, I want to put this out in front of you. Then you can either argue it or have questions about it or accept it or whatever. But please be willing to interact. I appreciate that. So for women, when you have a guy who you really like and he feels the one and he disappears on you, check in. Don't assume, first of all, because it's, he doesn't act the way you do. We, men and women act differently. There's a whole other conversation. I've had this before about how we react emotionally versus mentally in difference. So what you can do as a woman is check in with him and basically ask him where he is, like what's going on, because he may be going, I don't know, because he's achieved his goal and he's in this limbo state between achieving one goal and not having set up the next one. So it can be encouraging him. <laughs> You're not boring, but your voice is so smooth and I'm falling asleep. I hope that's good for you. <laughs> yes, I'm, <clears throat> I choke on my own voice, that was good. Um, <clears throat> yeah, I'm, I, my audio, my book, by the way, which I'll mention again, is going to be an audio format this year because a lot of ladies have been asking for it. So yeah, I know my voice has value in that way. Um, but speaking to that point, <laughs> speaking to that point again, thank you for that. Speaking to that point again, 
is for for women um, is to in, to actually inspire your man to set a new goal with you. As cheerleading as that might sound, it's very effective as a way of helping a man stay on track. So in a dating scene, it's good for him to take charge, but it doesn't hurt if you nudge him a little bit, if you know what I mean. Because we are, we like to think we're inspiring and we're, and we're, we're you know, we're, we're go-getters and make things happen. So a guy wouldn't mind, depending how you do it, if you invite him, like, it's like, let's plan something down the road. Maybe it's you say, you know what, I'd love it if we plan like a, okay, an example, perfect. If, for example, you're getting this guy and say, hey, how about we go camping or go on vacation or we go to Italy in three months, whatever that is. You're giving him the inspiration, even though you're suggesting it, that he sets up a goal because you don't say, you don't make it specific so he, you do it for him. But you throw out some ideas about, it would be so much fun if we did something adventurous, like we go to Disneyland or we do something like that. And then see how those seeds you planted in his consciousness blossom. Because he will, ideally, if he's the one on the same page as you, get inspired and come up with a great idea that he thinks he did, even though you actually planted the seed. But it works. Because what you're doing is you're giving him new goals to have with you, to explore together. If you leave it to him, so something fun and adventurous works well for something like this. For men especially, yes. Most men, because that's our thing, we're like, we're going to quest with the hunters, we're going to go get something done. To go to a crocheting class wouldn't inspire us. But it could be something as fun as, um, you know, I'd love to learn couples dancing, like tango or something. That can be very evocative too. Although for some men, it was for me, it's like, Dancing? Oh crap, I've got two left feet. So you've got to make it fun. So um, adventurous is good, something that's fun to do and that can be okay to make fun, to, make, to, make, um, to mess up with can be good as well. So those are some ideas for things you can do as progressive goals you can set with your man to help him stay inspired, stay connected, and he won't disappear. Although to be honest, that disappearance is actually a good um, signal to you because it means that he's not focused on a goal with you, which is an indicator to do something. And ideally, it's not something you have to do all the time, because most men ideally are smart enough. Again, lots of ideallys in this Periscope broadcast. But most men ideally, <laughs> as I keep saying the damn word, will get a clue and will move forward. And if you're an evolved, strong woman, you're going to attract that. You tried doing that, but he didn't seem too excited about the idea of why. Maybe it wasn't something, maybe Lara, it was something that didn't resonate for him. Remember that you and he are different, so maybe you want to in, in, um, provide, provide ideas and options that will fuel his fire first and then yours. Because they're just for you, it may not land for him, and that's one of the challenges of dating, is you may not have the same values and same um, <clears throat> ideas of what works for you. But if you do things which are um, provoking him, especially if you, because the other thing is also, one thing you can do as a woman is find out what your guy likes. What are things that inspire him, especially if they inspire you as well? Because then you can find out what it is that really flights his fire that you enjoy, which it might be camping or um, driving up the coast in a convertible, whatever that is. And by doing so, by doing those things, you have the opportunity to inspire him to come up with a goal that you benefit from as well. So it is ideal to find common values, yes, but not just things that you like because he may not like them, you know? Or comic con, he's, we, either, yeah, exactly. For some men, that's like awesome. It's so much fun to go dress up or to go watch the site. So if, if that's something that th you, you get inspired by and he does too, that's great. But bear in mind that some guys that doesn't work for. Now, in my book, I talk about the have-tos and the deal-breakers. Ideally, some of those things you want to do with your partner are on the have-to list because those things you want to have anyway. The temptation is to like, just have things you want to have that are very private. It's like, no. Ideally, you have things you want to have in your life to explore that he wants as well because you both have the same intentions. It might be go feed the homeless, even. I mean, the range is, is, in, is, is immense what's possible, but it's finding those things that inspire him first and you as well, if you want him to stay interested in focusing. Is that making sense? I think it is. And I appreciate your feedback, because, yeah, definitely some of the things are great, and Comic-Con, that's, that's a fun one. For some guys, I know they would, they would jump at the chance. So, Larry, I hope I can help you with that. Any, um, absolutely. Any other questions? I'm just making, taking my time. I've got half an hour still, so I've got time. Um, any other thoughts, questions you have before I uh, wrap up? This is kind of a, an add-on to what I did on Monday, which was the male point of view, but this is for the feminine point of view, so I'll make sure there's value in here for you. And I think you got some keys. <laughs> Hopefully so. Um, any other questions, any thoughts? I think that's it. Why do men cheat? That's a whole other question. 
um, in this context, because there's a whole much more so I can talk about that one, because that's a, that's a deep question, by the way, why do Midamin cheat? Um, this can, if in the context of this piece I was talking about with goals, well, hold on the scope, but let me just plant one seed here since you asked the question, and I didn't have anything else on the, on the deck for a question to be asked. One reason they cheat, um, actually two reasons, because that really sort of a one that one came behind it. First reason, talk about the goal setting stuff I mentioned earlier. It can be it doesn't feel inspired with you and inspired and meet somebody else and like, oh, a new goal I can achieve with her. So you've got to keep them interested in you. That's one of those things that can happen because we as men, our mind does tend to like drift around doing other things. The second one, though, is um, more emotional based and we don't deal with emotions very well, so just so you know this. For a lot of men out there, um, there's the fear of not being fully received or not being fully accepted in relationships. So rather than do that, we'll play safe and go cheat on someone else. Because the less we're invested in all relationships, the safer it is for us. Now, women do that too. So I'm not saying it's for men and men only. Women and men both have this. Um, some men, some women, excuse me, both have this um, perception, belief, fear that it'd be safer for them to cheat than to stay committed, as bizarre as that sounds. But that's the way we function. So. That's answering your question, I trust. Um, that was kind of the, um, the thin layer at the top of explaining what it is. There's a lot more to it in that conversation about cheating. But those two are two of the reasons why, why men and cheat and why women cheat as well. Okay? How did that land? Any thoughts, question, response? Cliff Notes version. <laughs> Aren't you in a meeting? Evie, how can you be watching this? Um, you're welcome, Shasha. Um, that, that's a... That's, uh, it's not a pretty one. And sometimes it's also behavioral because of upbringing. That's another conversation I could bring up. Um, oh, you're out now. Okay. Yeah. The, the Cliff Notes version, um, it was somewhat said Monday about the goal setting and setting up completed goals and, and, um, and keeping interest going. Why do men cheat and come back? Um, that's a whole, that one is another scope. I could do that in this one. Take too long. There's a lot of pieces of that puzzle. Um, why do they come back? probably because they have regrets, and it's an interesting mixed loyalty signal they're carrying. Again, I'm only giving you just a thin, thin taste of what explains this, because there's a lot more to it than that. Um, but it's about allegiance, it's about loyalty, it's about guilt. So you're speaking about personal experience, Sandy. Um, I can't speak to exactly why your partner did, um, because that's something that is a personal experience. So I don't, I don't have an easy answer for you to give, that it can be based on the fact that he was looking elsewhere to get fulfilled because he wasn't getting it where he was. I don't mean sexually, that's the thing. It's, a, it's this goal thing. We want to get a certain level of experience or, or um, result. If we don't get it with you, we'll go somewhere else for it. But if we don't get it there, we may come back out of regret or shame or loyalty or other things. So I can't say the exact answer why he did. Um, why did he give mixed signals? Uh, Lara, qualify that because I'm not sure what you mean in terms of cheating or something else. So please qualify that about. Why do you give mixed signals? Yeah, sorry, Sandy. That's, that's really, um, give me broad strokes because I don't know the specific situation you and he had. Um, so I can't give you exactly the perfect answer of what exactly it was, just what I could conjecture as a general theme. Okay? So, Laura, you were going to explain, hopefully, your um, question a bit more so I could give you a more direct answer. Sure. And if you want help with stuff like that, both as a couple or a single, that is kind of my work. Helping a lot of the hard work is my focus in my coaching. Um, if you want to find out more, by the way, quick plug, I do help for a discovery session consult if you're interested in finding out more about what I can do for you and what you might need. All right? AriSelby.com slash consult. All right? And my website's there, too. It's going to get review, redone soon. I'm, I'm way behind on updating my site. That's happening, uh, happening soon. That's, that's on my radar to get done soon. Yes, yeah, cheating. Oh, so, so like, can you write the question out again? So in terms of cheating, why? why? Because um, I spaced on the other question. Sorry. I didn't catch that one. If you could. Give me that one again, please, Laura. And I'm doing best to answer it. I'm waiting for it to show up. I know this 30-second this delay from when you type a question to when it lands is just a little bit like, OK, I'll just sit here and wait for it. So any thoughts, any questions, any? Uh... Yeah. <laughs> So, Laura, um, sorry, did you have that question you want to ask again? Crazy lag, yeah. It's, it's not as bad as it is for, um, I think Facebook Live is worse. It's like a minute and a half or something, two minutes between 
when you type and when it lands. Um, I haven't checked Mevi for that time delay. It's just it's part of the journey. High-speed internet is not high-speed uploading and downloading yet as much as it needs to be. Maybe it's different between Wi-Fi and cellular. I haven't tried that. I always do my, excuse me, do my scopes in uh, Wi-Fi usually. So, are you still here? I'm not sure. I didn't see a question come up from you. Oh, for example, um, the, some men say they care but don't show it. Oh, you're going to get into the emotional stuff. <laughs> um, as men, our ability to, get to share emotions isn't as strong suit, um, unlike you, as women. Women are much more emotionally based, emotionally functional, emotional facile to work through emotions. As men, we're thinkers, we're more doers. So our ability to emote and express emotions is harder. So to say we care and to feel we care aren't, as, aren't at the surface level as much as it is for women. Some men it is. But for many men, it's suppressed, it's protected because we don't deal with it that way. So it depends on the man you get to meet and who you hang out with. So does that help? Um, that was kind of a, a, a succinct answer. But it's kind of the, the fact we deal with that, the way we are wired as men in this world is we've got to function as a thinker, not as a feeler. Um, I've been, I was raised, I wasn't much as raised, but I spent a lot of time in the feeling zone, so I already get that level of understanding with women and expressed more feeling, which threw me out of the man's club for a while, truth. Um, but men in general, that's something that we've been told to repress and, and hide because we don't actually um, express it much. That's just the way we're wired. Thankfully, that's changing, and part of my work is helping men to own their power. So many men are teaching this now to own our feelings and be expressive because you deserve it. So, Laura, I hope that will change for you. You'll get more of that going forward. So any other questions, any thoughts? And Laura, if you want to talk more, I know you've watched my scopes a few times. If you want to reach out, I do offer I say, a free, free discovery session, 30-minute conversation by phone or Skype to see where you're at, what you're looking for, and uh, how I can help you. So and anybody else, of course, that's available too. Any more questions, any thoughts? You're welcome. Glad I could help. Any other thoughts or questions? I'm going to sign off in a minute because I have to grab a bite to eat before I go on the phones for the prayer ministry. Um, that's one thing, by the way, if you are looking for prayer, I do um, invite you to call into the Gapia Prayer Ministry, because I'll be on the phones, um, 3 p.m. to 5 p.m. Pacific time. Um, that's, uh, and for, the, for you, the phone number, in case you're interested, is area code 310-348-1270. All right? So, just saying. I'm on, th I'm on 3 to 5. <laughs> Not that you know it's me. We're anonymous on the prayer line. But I thought, hey, what the hell, I'm going to be on the prayer line in 25 minutes. So in case you feel like you want to get some prayer support that's spiritually based, not religious based, um, that's part of my background, my teaching, and what I do with my clients too. So by the way, um, what I don't mention on my website or in my coaching descriptions is I hold my clients in prayer during the time I work with them. That's part of the benefits of my coaching. It's not just working with you. Yes, Evie, a question. On my nose. Yes, question, Evie. Go ahead. It's okay. I know you were popping in and out. You had a meeting, so if I covered it, what was the question? And it, if it's a, if it's a question where we asked it, I'll answer it again. You know, you asked it, <laughs> and your question is: You said it was just oh, just a goal. Yes, right. So you said that I said we could suggest a goal or whatever. So what's the question? watching this, the screen for the question to pop up. You've set up the question. <laughs> what if he's an interest in you know darn well he normally would be? Ooh. Um, this depends on the, the, um, the commitment of the relationship. If, if he is someone who, yeah, if that's the case, if it's something he doesn't want to do because of some reason you can ask him why not. I mean, you could be that blunt. Depends on, again, depends on the context of the relationship. If you just like dating, that can be hard to do. If you've been together for a while, um, should we expect a disappearing act? Not necessarily. It's, you're challenging him, which he may not be able to respond to well. Um, this is a case-by-case -case basis, not something generic, like say, for men, or, um, how they interact. The, um, what's the best way to say this? This is something that is really, really um, sort of situational. 
but generally speaking, if it's, I mean, maybe give me an example, but if it's something where you suggest something and you know you should be interested, but it's not, something else is going on. Now, we may not have access to the knowledge of what's going on inside, because again, we're not wired that way to figure that out. But there might be something going on where we're feeling um, unwilling to commit or afraid of saying yes. I can't say what the answer is going to be necessarily. It may be we just, maybe not, maybe, maybe it's because we're simply not sure we can do it or we're not feeling up for it. Because we have feelings, but we don't necessarily know what they mean. <laughs> the choice of being a man is always interesting. Um, I don't know if that's going to help you much with it, Evie. I know it's not a, a succinct and perfect answer for you, but I uh, hope it helped you a little bit. Um, yeah. So thanks for joining me, Brian. Thanks for coming in. Um, this scope is actually almost about to end unless there's a lot more questions coming in. And so, yeah, well, I was trying to help best I could with Evie. So um, I want to give you at least a little bit of insight that would help you with that. So, you're welcome. So again, thanks for watching The Scope. Um, any other thoughts, questions before I sign off? And if you're just joining me, thanks for coming in, thanks for sharing The Scope, thanks for watching, and please watch the replay. Um, the good stuff happened. <laughs> At least this content they did. Um, I do a daily broadcast on Periscope, at least most days I did miss yesterday. Too much going on. Um, and different topics each day. And so this is Woman Up Wednesday, Monday is Man Up Monday, corresponding. Um, tomorrow right now is probably going to be thankful, thankful Thursday, presuming I get to do scope tomorrow. I've got a lot of stuff. The next few couple of days are kind of hectic, so we'll see if I can get some scopes in at some point during the day. Uh, if you check out my stuff, again, my book, 50 Ways to Love Your Lover, is my book on relationships. It's on number one Amazon bestseller. And you find out more about my, me at my site, which is barryselby.com. And by the way, all my archives for my broadcasts are here at cash.me slash barryselby. All right? Um, that's it, I think. Any other questions, thoughts? If not, I'm signing off because I've got to go get ready in a few minutes to do prayer ministry. All right? I think that's it. Thank you for watching. Thanks for joining on the scope. I will sign off now as there's nothing coming through the questions and comments. You're very welcome, Laura. And again, reach out if you need support. Thanks for watching. You're welcome, Sandy. I'm glad I could help. Um, hopefully, I gave you some clarity and some steps. Again, this is my work. And sometimes during the scope, I'll give you some themes, but not necessarily specific. So if you want specific help, reach out. Bye, Evie. Nice to have you here. Thanks for promoting and sharing my scope. Always love you being on my scopes because you, you bring it <laughs> as you do on your own scopes. And thanks for your help with uh, Karma and our folks with the Perry Dudes. That's the next thing is launching, so getting that going. Um, all right, thanks for watching. I'm going to sign off now and go do a couple of things and uh, grab a quick snack before I have to get busy. I'll see you guys later. Take care of yourselves, okay? Bye. <laughs>